In this lecture, we're going to be talking about local variables and the scope of local variables. Now, this isn't something that we have examples for in uh, our layout, so we can actually just close out of this. I need to show this to you in the event sheet. So if we make a global variable here, let's just call this global var, and we'll have it equal zero. Uh, that is all well and good, and you see that we have the global icon to indicate that it's a global variable next to it. But how do we make a local variable and what's the difference between them? The difference is the scope. So we know the scope of a global variable is the entire project. It is accessible throughout the entire project. I'm drilling that point home in case you don't know it. A local variable is only accessible to whatever it's nested in. Anything outside of that nest and it's no longer accessible. So this comes in handy in certain situations. I've used it a number of times to handle, you know, things like little quick power-ups and boosts and stuff in my games, but I've never really needed it for much else than that. But that being said, it's still a very important concept to learn. And also it's going to introduce groups in Construct 2, which I use a crazy amount. Groups are a way to just organize your code when you actually finish a chunk of code rather than having one long event sheet with over a hundred events that you have no idea what's going on, you can group them. So an example of grouping this would be if I have the keyboard, key is down, and let's just pretend since there's no enemy in this project, let's just pretend that S would duck the enemy or the player, whatever it is. How can I group this in and what would I call it? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard or I could right click and I could make a group, at least I should be able to right click add group you just don't right click on the event and we're going to call this player controls we'll pretend that that's our player now i have this group but nothing's in the group so what i can do in construct 2 is i can drag this and i can nest it so when you see here and this might look different depending on your event sheet color you can see the well one you can see this where i can't nest you can see that i have my mouse cursor has changed but then when i can nest it you can see right where it's going to go. You can even see this little arrow and then this line and then it's like, okay, let go. And now it nests this event into this group. And this is actually pretty huge because now you have all of these groups that you can now make. So for example, I can copy and paste this a bunch of times. You can see how many groups I could have and how useful this could really be in a larger scale project. Obviously that's not useful to me right this minute. But this is how you can start to create local variables. Now you don't need a group to create a local variable because all you have to do to create a local variable is nest it into an event. So what do I mean by that? Well, to make a global variable, you just have to click out of something. You just have to be in the event sheet and hit V and then you can see it says new global variable. But to make a local variable, you have to be already nested into something. So if I click on this event and then I hit V, you can see that because I'm already nested into this group, because this is already underneath the group uh, event there, I can now make, by hitting V, a new local variable. So let's call this local var, and this will equal a text value of uh, I am local. Uh, I am local, whatever we want to do. Now, if we hold down the S key, then we can actually change by going into the system, set the value of our local variable. And look, our local variable gets a uh, like a GPS icon or whatever you want to call that. It's pretty cool. Uh, our local variable text value from I am a local variable or I am local to yes, you are local. And just like that, now we're actually controlling this within the scope of this. But this logic right here, this action cannot be defined outside of this. So if I add in that same event, if I copy this and I try to paste this right here, it says I can't because I cannot paste something that is only defined within the group. That means that this local text variable is only accessible right here. So hopefully that makes sense. Local variables can come in handy. They definitely do supplement a lot of your code when you have a lot of grouping going on. Uh, but, you know, definitely good to know. You definitely need to know this. You know, I was thinking about what else I wanted to say, and there is, not related to local variables, but it is in terms of nesting. Nesting is something we did, haven't talked about yet, and this is where the power of Construct 2 really starts to show. This is where you really start to create more defined logic structures, and this is what I really love about Construct 2. I can now nest events as deep as I want. So what this means is, 
I already have this in a group. Let's forget about that for a second and let's forget about the local variable for a second. And I want to make a sub event. So maybe I want to make uh, a combo move, right? I want to hold down S, but then I want to also hold down the F key and see what happens when both happen. Now, technically what I would do here is I would just kind of put that into an and statement, but maybe there was another deciding factor, another condition in there that I needed to check. And maybe there was more than one combo. So to kind of answer the question that I asked in the last lecture, which is how would you do uh, the button thing where how would you make this into one event? The answer is you would nest the code. And this is how you would do that. You would just hit B on the keyboard to make a blank sub event. So this is nesting. We're making a blank sub event. I'm sure right click, insert new event below. No, uh, maybe we can right click. I don't know where we would right click to insert the sub event, but basically um, I should know that. All you have to do is hit B on the keyboard is what I know. And then you can make the blank sub event right there. And now you can see that this is nested as well. So what we can do now in terms of that button example or in terms of this example is if we're holding down S and we're holding down, or you know what, instead of holding down something, let's compare this. The local is still in the scope of this because it's still nested. And so is the global because the global also happens to be uh, accessible to the entire project. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna compare this, compare the global variable. Let's find out if it equals zero, which it does copy and paste this, let's find out if the local variable equals I am local, which we know um, it won't because I'm hitting S. So this will actually never get fired. We're just have, have to change this to yes, you are local, like so. So now if both of these are true and I'm holding down S, then I can have it do something else. Maybe I could then, I don't know, I could do whatever I want. I could have the global variable equal a thousand. I could do anything I want from this point. But this is how you start to create more intricate logic. This is how you could do something that we had with our buttons. You could say if the layout, you could even compare the layout here. Uh, that's one solution. There's multiple solutions to this. You can say if uh, the layout, or let me see how I do that. If the, you definitely can compare uh, the layout. I know you can compare the layout. Maybe you can't compare it in a, um, maybe you can't compare the layout. Anyway, my point is there are definitely ways you could do this. You could have a global variable decide what layout you're in for the button example. So if we had a global variable say, uh, what layout is this, and this equals one, then we would set what layout is this in the next event sheet to equal two, and if we're holding down the S key and we're comparing what layout is this, if it equals layout one or it equals layout two, then tell the button to go click this. So uh, in this case, our logic would be, let's go to layout one here, and let's add in our button just like we had in the last project our button or our logic right here would be if we click this and our global variable what layout is this is equal to one then go to layout one what it layout is this equal to two then go to layout two and you put this in our includes event from the last lecture so that has been local variables and in addition to local variables we're learning about sub events nesting these events and hopefully this is starting to make more sense as to how you can really start to take advantage of Construct 2's amazing visual editor. Thank you so much for watching this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one.